Hello and welcome back to the latest episode of Plat That, episode 5. So, new updates. We now have an official Twitter page for Plat That Podcast. This can be found under the handle of at Plat That Podcast, all lowercase and one word. Feel free to chuck it a follow. At the time of writing, we have had some news on the new Game Pass contender from Sony. Free tier levels of membership. The first being referred to as Essentials. This is basically PS Plus how we all know it, just renamed. This tier will grant the subscriber with one PS5 game and two PS4 games each month, as well as access to the online multiplayer, cloud storage and exclusive discounts. The pricing for this will be £6.99 per month, £19.99 per quarter and £49.99 per year. Then we have PS Plus Extra. So this membership tier grants some added bonus PS5 and PS4 games on top of the ones gifted in the Essential tier. When I first looked into this, I was slightly confused, but looking into it in more depth, it is effectively a combination of the Essentials package with PS Now added in with added bonus of PS5 titles. At launch, the confirmed lineup will be Death Stranding, God of War, Marvel Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, Mortal Kombat 11 and Returnal. The pricing for this tier will be £10.99 per month, £31.99 per quarter and £83.99 per year. Finally, we have PS Plus Premium, the daddy of all tiers. In this tier, you will get everything already mentioned plus the ability to stream PS3 games on your console. These will only be available for streaming and the option to download will not be present. The catalogue will also extend to PS1, PS2 and PSP titles which will have the option to be downloaded. I also heard a rumour on this that some titles will have added trophy support. Alarm bells are ringing Willie. As this will be the daddy of tears we will expect the pricing to be quite high. You're not wrong. £13.49 per month, £39.99 per quarter and a whopping 99.99 per year. The added bonus of having trophy support to the PS1 and PS2 titles does interest me, but I'm praying. No, scrap that, I'm hoping. No, I'm doing a magic rain dance to the gods that hopefully one day someone out there will add trophy support to Oblivion. I'm not holding my breath now that Microsoft owned Bethesda, but boy can dream, Carney. Anyway, enough dreaming about one of my favourite games of all time, and back to the task in hand. What's that, can you hear? You got it, that someone just returned to fix the cabinet with some nice shiny new glass? Oops, sorry, right back to it, my fifth platinum. They're climbing up in numbers now. This episode we're going to look at Tom Clancy's The Division. Shall we have a little bit of a background on this one? Tom Clancy's The Division, or as most people refer to it, The Division, is a tactical shoot and loot RPG. It was developed by Massive Entertainment and published by Ubisoft. The plot of The Division is one that I found very interesting. In 2001, an operation known as Dark Winter was launched. Dark Winter was a real world exercise that was putting the emergency response to a bioterror attack to the test. In the United States, The simulation went a bit tits and spiralled out of control in just a few days resulting in a breakdown in essential care, civil uproar and unthinkable civilian casualties. This simulation came true. In 2015 there was an outbreak of a virus nicknamed Dollar Flu due to the transmission factor. The virus attached itself to banknotes and were circulated into the market on Black Friday, causing within a day an international pandemic. The division is set in Manhattan and this has is the epicentre of where the virus originated. You play as the main, shall we say, hero, who is an agent from the Strategic Homeland Division, the SHD. Using a third person cover based gameplay mechanic, your mission is to secure strategic locations across New York City. The game is open world and has main missions as well as side missions. There is a huge RNG aspect to the game and the way the levelling up system works is that each item, weapon and clothing article adds to the gear score which dictates the level of your character. 
Sometimes you can pick up your preferred weapon you're using with higher equipment level, which boosts your gear score. You can play this game solo or you can squad up with three other players. There are multiple locations in the game that are focused around New York City that can be explored, all the classic sites etc, as well as nine dark zone districts. Now when I say dark zone, they are online PvP areas set in the game as a quarantine zone. The PvP works slightly differently to the main game as when you find loot in the dark zone, this is contaminated and will need to be airdropped out of district and cleaned. This was the most nerve wracking part of the game for me because there were only a few extraction zones, so calling in the helicopter, which took what felt like forever to arrive, and then having to go up to the rope to attach the loot while not getting shot by other players trying to do the same. You could, and me and my friends did on multiple occasions, turn against other players and kill them and take their loot for extraction to ensure they didn't get ours. The weapons in the game are a selection of assault rifles, light machine guns and submachine guns, my standard, sidearms, shotguns and sniper rifles, my secondary weapon. The gear item, a backpack, glove, body armour, knee pads, holsters and masks, all of these items add to your total gear score level. The Division has a total of 66 trophies, however this includes 3 DLC packs, so only 50 trophies are needed for the Platinum. PSNProfiles.com has this listed as 5 out of 10 difficult rating, and yeah, I can agree with that. There are some trophies on this list that were an absolute bastard, mostly the ones that are tied to the Dark Zone. If I had to pick one of these that gave me the most bother, I would have to say it was the trophy named Plundered. The requirement to make this baby pop is to extract a superior or higher piece of equipment from the dark zone. Doesn't sound too hard, but the sheer panic when you find one of these items and the chaos of getting to the extraction point and having to bid it farewell nearly broke me as I had the required item in my possession a few times to only have it stolen from my cold dead hands at the last possible minute. As this game is a PS4 only game, the trophy list is not shared across the multiple platforms within the PlayStation ecosystem. My final thoughts on this game, I thoroughly enjoyed playing this game because I found the story incredibly interesting. I also played this with two friends and let's just say we got obsessed. Like, I mean, we really got obsessed to the point where it was all we lived and breathed. I remember getting a text off one of my mates with a purple beam from a travel lodge sign saying there was a rare piece of gear over there. This was my fifth platinum and I loved every second of it. I was so happy and so sad when the platinum popped, the sign of a good game. I'm very pleased that I have this in my collection and would 100% do it again if I could repop it. So there we have it, we're at the end of another episode, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back with Platinum number 6. If anyone has any comments or would like to be involved in the podcast, please do let me know. I can be found on Twitter under at plat that podcast, all a lowercase. Drop me a message and I'll be happy to respond. So once again, thank you for your time and I look forward to making episode 6 while we'll have a look at Platinum. That is a bit strange. Goodbye for now. Bye!